section. All right. So next, I wanted to talk about Copilot in Outlook and some of the new things that we've gotten over the past couple months in Copilot within the Outlook experience. And there's three things that I wanted to highlight. Um, earlier on or so far, we've had the ability to, you know, summarize an email thread or um, help us draft a reply to an email, draft a new email, get coaching with an email. Those have kind of been the three core competencies. But Microsoft over the past couple of we, uh, months has really made it so you can kind of expand your capabilities outside of an individual email thread. And they've done that in two ways with two co-pilot shortcuts or co-pilot chats, if you will. The first one, we showed it a little bit earlier in this live stream, but it's the co-pilot button in the upper right hand corner of your window. If you open this up, it gives you a sidebar. And this is basically like an in-app experience for, um, for Outlook. And I'm in Outlook on the web right now. So if you're at outlook.office.com, you've got this co-pilot in the upper corner. And what this does is it will help you work outside of just a single email thread. So you can find things in your email like, hey, you know, find all the attachments in the last two weeks from my mailbox. Uh, find that email from Tom that had uh, the uh, the latest menu from our spring lineup or something like that. So you can help find stuff. It can also help you orchestrate things in your email. So this one is create an inbox rule, right? And this is something that a lot of people like, you know, you know that you can do rules in Outlook, but you don't really know all the clicks to go do it. So I could say, you know, create an inbox rule to um, label all emails from uh, Alistair uh, as blue, right? And it will orchestrate and help me create that inbox rule where I don't really know all of the little clicks to go do that particular task. It can help me out with that. So see, it popped open the, the settings to the rules area. It, you know, does this and says, Everything from, and it's, it found Alistair Pugin or Pugin. I, I've never pronounced your last name, Al. Um, but uh, it, it found him because he's in the tenant. And then it's going to categorize it as blue. So it took my plain text, my natural language. It understood what I wanted to do. And then there we go. Now I've got a rule in Outlook to label all of that stuff as blue. So um, that's something that you can do to kind of orchestrate things in Outlook. Um, and it can help you find things. It can help you organize your mailbox, do that type of stuff. So that is kind of a across the mailbox type of a co-pilot experience. And this is like one of those promises we saw back January of last year, right? It's been like a year and a half where they said, you know, you'll be able to tackle your mountain of email. We're starting to see baby steps towards that direction. The second thing is, is a new co-pilot chat app experience in Outlook on the web. So again, outlook.office.com. If you go to your sidebar on the right-hand side, you now have a co-pilot icon as well. And it might be underneath the app section, or it might just be in the rail right there. Um, I don't think I can drag. Okay, I can't drag out right now. But if you open that out, it opens up the full co-pilot and it's basically like outlook.office.com slash chat, right? So it's the same type of experience. I have the upload button right here. I have the catch up tab. I have all of my previous chats as well. And it's got all of that type of stuff um, available to me basically launching out of outlook into that, but I can still get back to my calendar. I can still get back to my email. So the rail is still there. John, um, you can right click and pin it to the sidebar and then move it where you okay. want. Okay. Yeah, I figured that that's probably what I was missing. So if you use like that more than like the people or the groups tab, maybe I want to clean up these ones and maybe I want to just have my co pilot, my to do, and my files. You kind of are building like a little like dock over there on the side. Thanks for that, Andy. So it's interesting, like, Microsoft, again, you know, like I kind of complained a little bit earlier. It's like, all right, you gave me like 
three little copilot y things within this one text box. Now we're starting to see copilot is being sprinkled throughout one uh, throughout Outlook. You've got it now in the middle as this ribbon. You've got it on the right hand side as a sidebar chat. And you've got it on the left hand side as a full blown application. So it's like you, there's copilot on copilot on copilot in my little uh, panes here. But the that's go not ahead. All. Yeah. Yes, on there mute. is one more thing that is click rolling on, out right now. Click go on ahead. new before you do that. Click on new. Oh, okay. Yeah. So go to new, and then there's a copilot button right there in the middle as well. And where I can and, draft. and go ahead. If you if you close that, it's in the body of the message. If you hit the forward slash. Oh my god! Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So there, if there you do that, there, you can draft in, the copilot. In Outlook, there are five plus ways oh to gosh. invoke copilot. They really want you to use copilot in your email. <laughs> if you haven't noticed, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna bring this comment up on the on the board uh -huh. uh, or on the on the screen. The major hurdles are within a single product, all the different avenues to anything copilot. It's here, it's there. If you click on this, if you stand on one foot, if you point north, you know, touch your nose, copilot will appear. There yeah. are many different <laughs> places where it's going to show up. And you haven't even left the, the web browser. If you go down to the desktop app, it's different mm -hmm. there as well. And that's in the new and the classic. Yeah, yeah. So Copilot's kind of all over the place. Now, another, uh, yeah, okay. So yeah, Carolyn's pointing out like, hey, also it's in the classic Outlook for desktop as well. So Copilot is kind of all over the place okay. whenever it comes to Outlook now. Um, something that is rolling out right now, my friend Tom, our product manager at EY for, uh, for Copilot, he has it in his Outlook client, but I don't have it yet. So I can just talk about it, but I can't actually show it. This is the ability to schedule with Copilot. And what happens is the scenario you get is you have like um, an email thread. The thread's going back and forth a whole lot. And eventually you reach a point where you're like, you know what, we just haven't need to have a meeting about this because it's gone on long enough, right? Um, so we've always had this ability up here to say reply with a meeting and it will just create a dumb meeting request, right? That's basically a continuation of the thread with everybody in here. And then I have to like use, you know, other things at my disposal. There's a new button that's coming out that's going to be right next to that. And it's going to be basically the same icon, but with like a sparkle on it. And that is schedule with Copilot. What that one does is it takes the people in the chat, in the, in the email thread, aligns them all to like a recommended meeting time, attaches the email thread as an attachment. Then it does two things in the body. It gives you a summary of the chat thread. So it intelligently collapses the entire chat into like a single paragraph of here's what we were talking about and the reason why we needed to have this meeting. Then it also intelligently creates an agenda with a bulleted list item of, hey, if we were going back and forth trying to decide about something, the meeting needs to be to make that decision, right? And Copilot understands that, and it will put that in the agenda. We're going to discuss everybody's concerns. We're going to come to a decision, right? That's the agenda. Um, if it was to, you know, um, to talk about options and all the options have kind of been going through, then the agenda would say, we're going to have like Alex talk about his proposal, have Megan talk about her proposal, come to a decision. So it's going to take those nuances of the thread and it's going to help you create that as a meeting. Now, because I can't show it, I, I wanted can. to bring this up. Screen up. I got a screenshot of it. You do up. have it. Okay. I don't um, have it live, I, but I have a screenshot of it. Before you, you show that screenshot, I just wanted to show the uh, the feed the uh, oh my gosh roadmap feature item. Sorry, my blood sugar is starting to come back down to normal after lunch. Um, but essentially, it tells you like what you're able to do with like the conversation summary, the attendee list, all of that stuff. What I wanted to show is that this is going to be coming mostly across the board. 
It's coming to the new Outlook experience for Windows, so it won't be in the classic desktop PC experience, but it's also coming to web, Mac, and mobile. So basically everywhere except for classic Outlook on Windows. And that rolled out starting this month. You want to show your screenshot? There's your screen. So this is what the command is actually going to look like. Perfect. It's starting to show up in the wild. Full credit to the author on LinkedIn that posted this. I sent this to you as a chat earlier today. Okay. I just yeah. happen to have it like queued up. But this is what it's going to look like when you see the schedule with a co-pilot button start to light up mm -hmm. in your tenant. Yeah. That's awesome. So uh, that is what we know about with um, our features in Outlook. Now, I'm going to keep driving and get back over to my screen and show. Go ahead. You have something else about Outlook? Yeah. So before you okay. before you segue um, away from, from Outlook, there mm -hmm. was one other um, feature that Microsoft has been touting for a long time, and that okay. relates to meetings. And that's the follow this meeting with Copilot for a mm, meeting that yeah. you are invited to, but maybe you can't attend because you have a, uh, a conflict. Mm -hmm. uh, this has been, it's going on, no shade to Microsoft. It's going on a year now since they've advertised this. But if you have a meeting invite the, that you receive, um, they're saying that you would be able to follow um, uh, that event and mm -hmm. then have Copilot be able to go back and uh, track that event, even if you weren't in attendance for it, be able to co-pilot against mm -hmm. that event, even if you weren't there live. Yeah. And I've got that on my screen here. I actually have that in my sandbox environment. So mm -hmm. a meeting invite, accept, decline, or tentative. But now there's a fourth option, which is to follow this event. If I click on that, then I have responded that I'm going to follow so that the organizer actually sees John can't make it but he's going to follow it. That's kind of a prompt like, hey, organizer, you should record and transcribe the meeting so that John can use Copilot to like stay in the know. You know, hey, Cool thing about that, I just mm -hmm. got an email that said you're following that meeting. Cool. Can you show that? Yeah. I want to see what, what does the organizer see? Right here. Awesome. John is following the meeting. What does it say below that? Uh, learn more about follow. They won't attend, but are interested and want to get into or want to get info about it. Consider recording this meeting so they can catch up later. Perfect. I love that. But technically, I want everybody to know, technically, they need to transcribe the meeting, not just record it. Yeah. Um, Microsoft has a, a nasty habit of assuming that everybody is configured out of the box the same way. However, if you have just the default you know, setup, then everybody's able to record. And when you record a meeting, it also transcribes the meeting for you. Or if you record the meeting without transcription, then stream will automatically transcribe it. Most organizations or many organizations, they have deviated away from the default. So in an organization where you, um, you know, don't have that auto transcription or you're in a situation where people don't want to be recorded, but they're okay with the transcript running. I know there's culturally, there's a few countries that I'm aware of where it's a little bit more acceptable to have a written transcript, but people don't want like their, their tone of voice recorded, you know, because of like sentiment stuff. Um, Microsoft is saying, consider recording the meeting. I'm going to tell you, you need to transcribe the meeting, not just record it. Um, so organizers out there, red flag, uh, transcribe the meeting or it's not going to help the person. <laughs> so, um, sorry to get on my soapbox about that. It's just, I'm in one of those organizations where it is not all just out of the box default. The, so. the nuances of transcription are so detailed that there's actually a 17 page PDF that Microsoft mm -hmm. created about the ins and outs of transcribing a meeting with Copilot. Yeah. It would be a good deep dive for us, but you can see how we like never stick to two hours. It'd be like a 12 hour deep dive. And like, I I think I would have to like wear a blood pressure cuff the whole time because I would get so wound up about it. Well, on, on, on that note, like 
this is your co-pilot anonymous group for co-pilot addictions. <laughs> like this is what this meeting is, or, yeah. you know, this live stream that we we basically do is like you're in the right place if you're here. <laughs> this is, you know, co-pilot uh, anonymous. <laughs> yeah, right. So, so is that it for uh, Outlook? Thanks for bringing up that follow feature. I forgot about that. Uh, I think that yeah, uh, yeah, that covers that covers the web based experience. Now, like I will, yeah. I'll be transparent. I'm not covering the desktop based experience because one, I'm a Mac user and mm -hmm. I'm in the new outlook and I've been in the new outlook for a couple of years. That's the default on the Mac side of the, of the house. For those of you that are on the windows side, there's uh, outlook classic and there's outlook um, new, the new outlook. Mm -hmm. And there's there's significant differences between the two to the point where in my organization, we basically have the message when you get provisioned for Copilot. Sure, we can update your um, your uh, group policy so you can install the new Outlook client. But chances mm -hmm. are there's a feature or a plug in you need with a classic Outlook desktop. We recommend yeah. that you keep that. So that you can continue to work within your normal flow, and if you want to experience Copilot, use Outlook for the web or OWA, uh, as uh, mm -hmm. we often abbreviate it. That way, you can kind of experience both sides of the house. Mm -hmm. But with just what we saw in the web browser and the five plus Copilot experiences sprinkled in here, there, and everywhere, it gets even more confusing when you get to the desktop client. Yeah. So pick and choose your own adventure, but we're purposely not showing the desktop client because actually i'll speak for both of us we're both mac guys yeah. and i could virtualize the windows experience on it but that would be a two-hour deep dive in and of itself <laughs> um one tip before i leave outlook behind is if you do want to have the coolest latest features in outlook on the web but you want it to feel native what you want to do is go into edge microsoft edge and then click this little box right here with the three squares and the plus sign that is to install a progressive web app for Outlook. If I do that, it's going to install basically a web shortcut that is in my native uh, applications folder. And now I've got Outlook on the web in all of its glory as a floating window with notifications and all of that cool stuff. But it doesn't feel like a website anymore. It, it feels, you know, a little bit more native to my operating system. So that that's a pro tip install the progressive web app. Now you can have your classic outlook and you can have your web outlook both feeling like apps and you can just kind of open whichever one you feel like using today.